meal planning. When I say that, what does it do to you? Does it like make you squirmy or super excited to go check out Pinterest? Either way, today I want to give you some of my tips and strategies on how I meal plan. So stick around. Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health. This podcast is for women who just want simple and graced filled ways to take care of themselves and age their bodies well. And of course, we enjoy a little chocolate in the process. Also, welcome to season two of Graced Health. We just finished talking about fitness and exercise and all all the things that I love. And now we are moving into the kitchen. Now, I am not a registered dietitian. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a certified health coach. So I'm not going to tell you what to eat, which I normally wouldn't really tell you exactly what to do anyway. But we are going to be talking about all kinds of different ways to make our kitchen life a little bit easier and more efficient and maybe save us some time. And so these are the kinds of things that I either have implemented in my own house or Sometimes it's that I know that I need to do and I haven't, but so we can just do this together. The first thing that we are talking about, so season two, episode one is meal planning. Now I have to tell you the way I have meal planned has changed significantly in the 23 years I have been married. I think it's 23. I should probably know that. (laughs) 22 maybe. Anyway, I got married two months after I graduated from college. And so I just sprang into adulthood and had never really helped out in the kitchen. My mom always encouraged me to do that. And hey, you need to learn how to cook. And I was like, "Ah, I'll figure it out. So what we had for dinner and what I meal planned over and over and over again was chicken that might have been seasoned with salt and pepper, if that sauteed. And I did these, um, I think they were called like Lipton cup of noodles, not a cup of noodles, but it was like some noodle mix. And I just put it in boiling water and stirred it around. And my husband and I joke that this is really all I remember cooking when I was first married. I know I did some other things, but that was it. I mean, that was on the menu several times a week. And my grocery budget at that time was $45 a week. I'm just going to say I spend a lot more than that now. (laughs) A whole lot more. My meal planning as I've gotten older and more comfortable in the kitchen and had more kids has definitely evolved, but it's something that I have always done. It started off with, I think it was like a leftover spiral notebook from one of my college classes. It was red and five by seven and I meal planned dinner only Monday through Thursday. We ate out Friday Saturday lunch, Saturday night, Sunday lunch. And then I don't know what we did for Sunday night. We figured something else out, but it was very, very simple. And it really has expanded since then, but it can still be a lot. And it's really, really hard for me still to sit down and figure out what in the world we are going to eat because I hate going to the grocery store. I used to not mind it. And then I had children and then I really minded it. And now I just have more things I want to be doing. It's just not as exciting to me. So I try and go to the grocery store as little as possible. If I'm going to do that, I better put some time in to meal plan and to figure out what it is I'm going to feed all of these hungry mouths between now and a week from now, which honestly, I probably go twice a week. I'd like to say I only go once a week, but I see or my husband sees all of the uh, charges to our local grocery store come in. And I do indeed go more than once a week. Now, just like everything else I talk about, I don't think that there is exactly one right way to do it. So I'm going to give you some things that either I do, or that I have heard some of my really smart friends do. And maybe one of these will stick with you, or it might be that you already meal plan, but it might give you an idea. Because when I talk with people about what they do, I'm like, Oh, that's great. I'm going to implement that or I can do that this week or something like that. So 
this is not like this is exactly how you meal plan, but they are ideas to help make your life a little bit easier on that Tuesday night when we're running from one practice to another and coming home from work and all of that kind of stuff. So the first thing I would encourage you to think about whenever you're sitting down and thinking about what am I going to cook for dinner is consider what's my protein, what's my veggie, what's my carb. Half of your plate ideally is filled with the vegetables. I know I'm getting into dangerous territory because again, I know I'm not a a dietitian, but that's pretty, that's pretty good, solid advice coming from anyone. But what's the protein? What's the veggie? What's the carb? So that's a really good way to at least start narrowing down some things. And obviously, these vary depending on the meal. You know, and keep in mind too, you be creative. Protein does not have to come from an animal and vegetables can be prepared in a million different ways. My favorite time this time of year in the, I'm using air quotes here, winter in Houston. So the high is like 60, but I love doing soups. Those are fantastic ways to get my kids to eat vegetables and me as well. The other thing that I would like to kind of point out is keep a running grocery list throughout the week. I know this is really simple. I just have, I remember seeing my mother-in-law had this little index card and I think she still does this to this day, honestly, but she just has this little index card that she would put on her kitchen counter and she would write down what things that they need because nothing is worse than on a Wednesday morning, my kids going, mom, we're out of milk. And even though I went to the grocery store yesterday, nobody told me we were out of milk and I didn't check because I don't drink the milk. (laughs) So keep a running list. And if you're really lucky, your kids will help add to it. But I know that's asking a lot. Number three is develop, I'm just going to call it target categories. So instead of just sitting there looking at your whole week going, what in the world am I going to make this week, kind of start narrowing down, maybe it's the days, maybe it's the types of meals. So If your family eats meat, maybe think about, okay, well, I want to have two chicken meals, one beef, one fish, and one meatless or something like that, which I know is not meat, but you get the point. I mean, maybe you categorize by cuisine. So maybe all of your Monday nights are Mediterranean. I know sometimes people do meatless Monday. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but uh, that's a great way to do it. Or maybe Wednesday night is Italian. Tuesday night is Mexican. I mean, you can, you can figure it out there. So that that way you're not thinking about, oh my gosh, there's so many things. What am I going to make? It's no, what kind of Italian meal am I going to make? Maybe another category is what ingredients do you have? This is something my mother is so good at and I am working hard to do better, but like, Hey, these are the things that we have and I don't need to go buy. And so this, I'm going to create a meal based off of the ingredients that I have, or if you have a bag, half a bag of lentils, well, use those. I know this is you're thinking, Amy, this is total common sense. I know, I know. And I'm not great at it, because I'm such a recipe. I'm such a rule follower with so many things that I need the recipe, which is the rule, and I can do it. And I'm not super great at being creative, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better, but I'm not great at that. Maybe you go by the category of texture. So maybe you want like a crunchy salad one night or something you sip like with a broth based soup or something like that the next night. And maybe sometimes it's uh, soft or if it's, you know, meaty or something like that. So changing up your textures and then, you know, you can have your days of the week. We've all heard of Taco Tuesday or the Meatless Monday, like I just talked about. Oftentimes I'll just say breakfast for dinner on Wednesday night. And maybe that's like an actual meal I plan, or maybe it is just that we make scrambled eggs and that's it. But you can kind of do a days of the week as well. Now, once I sit down and go and think about, okay, these are the meals that I want to have, then I will also plan them out by the expiration date. Oftentimes I go to the grocery store on Sunday, which means, and my family knows this, Sunday night is trout night. (laughs) Almost every Sunday night I get steelhead trout because my husband's allergic to salmon and steelhead trout like is basically the same thing as salmon. And because fish will go bad a little bit more quickly, I'll use that first. I can buy a little bit more time with chicken and then even more time with beef. So that's oftentimes the 
order that I use my meats and pork, I think is, I really don't, I don't use pork a whole lot, but I think it's somewhere in between chicken and beef. It kind of obviously check the expiration dates. I know I don't even need to say that. Here's another idea that I wish I was smart enough that I came up with on my own, but I didn't. It's actually from years and years ago, there was a blog called Simple Mom. And now I think it's the art of simple.net. It's uh, Tish Oxenreiter is the one who came up with this. And she has a two week repeat. What she does is she sits down and plans out two weeks at a time. But then everything that she makes, she doubles it up, she freezes it. And all of a sudden, a whole month of meal planning is done. Isn't that brilliant? I so wish I would have come up with that. I don't necessarily do that because our schedule doesn't always work with that. But you can really bang out a lot with an hour of meal planning and then doubling up your recipes. I mean, think about the freedom that you don't have to have if you're, if you can freeze most of the stuff or freeze portions of it or the time intensive parts of it, and then add it to you know, a salad or you know, something like that. And really, no one's going to complain about having one meal twice in one month. And if they do want to complain about that, then you can invite them to meal plan and to cook. That's what I say about that. Now, once you get everything set, one thing you can consider doing is a prep day, a big, large batch meal prep. I, this has really, it seems like this is really exploded. Maybe it's just Pinterest or Instagram or something like that. But I see more and more of this. And I'm actually going to try and I'm working on getting a girl on who I watch doing the big batch prepping. And it just looks she just makes it so simple. So I'm hoping to get her on and we'll do a whole nother podcast on tips and tricks and stuff like that. But one of the things that I do is when I'm in the middle of cooking my trout (laughs) on Sunday nights, I will take some of my family's favorite vegetables. So that's like cucumbers, and red peppers. And then of course, you know, baby carrots, I don't have to do anything with. And I'll cut a whole bunch of those up and put them in a food storage container. And that's something that everybody can easily grab, either for lunches or for snacks or something like that. So having those batch preps really make life easier in the middle of the week. I know I've talked on Instagram about how I will make a big, huge salad, and I hold the dressing. So I'll hold the dressing and hold the nuts. And then and that will last a really long time, a lot longer than I ever thought it would. So that's something you can do too. Again, we'll get into that another time. Something else to consider as your meal planning is having a leftover day. I know I'm not always the best at using what is in my refrigerator that are that are leftovers. So one thing you can do is just say, okay, Thursday night, we're eating the stuff out of the fridge and kind of clearing it out or whatever night that is for you. But you know, we do we can be our own garbage disposals for sure. I have some people on my house who are better than that than others. But again, if if they don't like it, they can they can meal plan. <laughs> And they can help you, me use whatever is in the refrigerator. And look, let's be honest, no one will like leftover day. That's just how it's going to be. But it's fuel, it's food, it's probably going to be healthy. And it's a lot better for you than going out and going to whatever fast food restaurant you like. So it's all right. You know, one meal a week leftovers, that's okay. They can get over it. I'm a little I'm in a little snarky mood today, apparently. <laughs> Uh, Another thing, add in a grace day, add in a day where you know you're going to buy your dinner or eat out or something like that. I know for about six months, we used to get pizza. We don't get the pizza anymore. But you know, just having a day where you know, you're not going to have to cook. Oh, that is I mean, that talk about a grace day. It's just it's nice not having to do that. And the last strategy I would uh, suggest that you try is make some freezer meals. You know, I talked a little bit about this on the the two week rotation. But I love using the freezer. And I might do a whole episode on things that I put in the freezer, because that really does make your life so much easier. Unfortunately, it does kind of change the cellular structure of vegetables. So you have to be a little bit creative, you know, we can't freeze a salad, we all know this. But uh, having particular ingredients, if nothing else that I can thaw out and throw in to a meal makes a huge difference as well. 
Okay. So I know that that I, I think I started numbering things and then I didn't keep up with that. So I'm sorry for that. But let's do a super quick recap with all of these. Have an individual meal goal. So that's the what's my protein? What's my veggie? What's my carb? Keep a running grocery list throughout the week. It'll make it a lot easier when you go to do your grocery shopping. Develop your target category. So that's like your cuisine, your ingredients, your days of the week, your uh, meat goals, if you have those or, or ingredient goals or something like that. Plan by your expiration date. Remember your fish goes bad first. You guys know this. I don't even need to say that. I probably shouldn't have even included that in. I'm sorry if, if I've insulted you. Consider a two week repeat meal plan, two weeks long, double it up when you can pull it out, freeze them, pull them out of the freezer. You've got month, you've got meals for a month. It's fantastic. Do a long cook prep day. So just cook up as much as you can. Like I said, I'm going to try and do a whole nother episode on that bringing in someone who's who's a lot better at it than I am. Add in a leftover day when you meal plan, just get all the stuff out of your fridge, use the human garbage disposals, add in a grace day, I think that I should have put that one last, but I didn't. Oh, well, and then make some freezer meals, make a bunch of meals, stick them in the freezer or at least ingredients to your meals, and it will make your life easier on those busy weekday nights. Now I want to give you one more little bonus tip. Full disclosure, I have already gone through and edited this episode. And I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell them one of the things that I do that is so helpful to me. One thing I do when I come across a recipe that looks interesting, and I'm like, oh, I really want to try that. I will, uh, take the link, take the URL, and I will put that straight into my calendar. I keep all of my meal planning on my calendar. So that way, when I'm looking at my day, I can see not only do we have basketball games and track practice or whatever it is, but we're also having stir fry for dinner or whatever that might be. So I will actually link it on a date in the future and just put it on there. Now, does that mean we're going to have it on that day? Not necessarily, I will kind of move it around. But that is a great reminder to me that I have a new recipe, I want to try. And then it's also right there for me. When I'm sitting down on my Sunday or my Saturday, and I'm meal planning, I can look ahead at the week on my digital calendar and say, Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted to try. What are the rest? Of, what are the ingredients? So it's one less thing I have to think about. What's the one simple thing I want you to remember? Making the investment of meal planning on the front end will really help on the back end. I probably don't even need to say this. You guys know this. But play around and figure out what style of meal planning works best for you. Hey, if you have not yet, would you subscribe to this? And if you can leave a rating and a review on Apple podcasts that it really does help the show. And I so appreciate everyone who does that. Also, if you would like show notes sent directly to your email, go over to gracedhealth.com slash podcast, put your email in and I will get those to you. I know sometimes it can be a little hard hunting down the show notes, especially if you're just driving along and listening to this. So I will send you all of the links and resources and all of the other good stuff that I try and include on here. Make sure you check out the resources tab over at gracedhealth.com. I have all kinds of goodies over there like hit workouts and a checklist and make ahead breakfast, speaking of batch prepping, make ahead breakfast that my family loves to have. So go over there, check those out, make sure you download any of those. Okay, that is all for today. Go out there and have a great day. 